Hello there, my name is Ella and today we're going to talk about how to paint a wood texture. This video is a part of a material study series that is designed as a month-long YouTube series, so make sure to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on any of the videos. Before we start making amazing and beautiful wooden assets, first we need to learn some basics and fundamentals on how the surface of the material actually works and behaves. We're going to start with an isometric cube because that is the easiest way to learn how light works on the surface of our wood. Uh, I also prepared a color palette, which you can download down below or feel free to use your own palette. Here we have our cube and I just lowered the opacity so it's easier for me to see the colors underneath the cube. Uh, so I'm just gonna add a new layer and I'm gonna use this lasso tool, but this is polygonal lasso tool and I'm just gonna make my selection Okay, and now I'm gonna start with some base color and I'm gonna fill this cube with this bucket tool G on the keyboard and I'm just gonna color pick this one. I would say this is a middle tone Okay, so on this color, we can easily add darker and lighter values later on. Our cube has three visible sides, as you can see here. So the top, the left, and the right, uh, which is a great help with uh, lighting directions. We can easily separate those three planes, and we can say that the top is the lightest because the light hits from the top. In this case, the left one will be a little bit darker, and the right plane is completely in shadow. So we're gonna add a new layer and by holding Alt on keyboard, we're gonna make a clipping mask. This allows us uh, to paint everything inside the base shape that we applied the mask. So if we take, for example, this dark brown, uh, we basically cannot paint anything outside of this cube. Okay, so we're going to use some basic brushes. Here I have hard round pressure opacity brush and soft round pressure opacity. So those are the two brushes that we're going to use today. And I'm sure that most of the softwares, most of the painting softwares have those two brushes or some kind of those brushes. Let's go back to the lighting setup and let's grab our lasso tool once again and let's and let's place the lighting setup as a base for texturing. Okay, now we're gonna grab our shadow color. I would say I'm going with this one. Let's place it on the left plane. Okay, and for this plane, I'm gonna go with this color. Okay, and for the top plane, we're gonna make it a little bit lighter. And now I'm gonna use this soft round brush, pick, color pick this color. And I think this worked just fine. Okay, and now we're gonna just remove this layer with a cube sketch because now we have visible our three planes with a base color and lighting setup. Okay, now we're gonna back to the shape layer and mask it, which means if we use brush and the color black, it actually behaves like an eraser, so you can erase some parts, make some other shapes out of your object, whatever you want. But when we switch back to white, it actually brings back those hidden parts of your object. Like so. So you can always play with this, you can always make some other shapes, or you can bring it back. Uh, you have a full control over it, but make sure that you stay on the mask, not not on the shape, but click the mask and play with these options. So we're just gonna use the black and basically just erase some, some of the edges and some of the parts to make it look more like a wood. Okay. 
Okay, let's say we're happy with our shape and now let's go and make it look like an actual tree texture. Textures on tree are very unique and every tree has its own pattern. So you can always make the strokes how, however you think it would work. And I'm going to explain how I'll do it. On a new layer, which is also clipped uh, to the basic shapes, uh, we're gonna start making our pattern and our grooves. Please know that this is my way of doing it and how I like to do it. But of course, this is not the only way. Uh, there's always a variety of techniques and ways how to texture something. But this is just my way and I like to work like this. So I'm gonna show you and I'm gonna talk you through how I do it. So basically we have three, three base colors. Uh, the lightest one, the middle one and the darkest color. And we're gonna for now work with those three so if i want to make shadows on the middle uh tone i'm gonna color pick the darkest value here and though that will be my uh shadow if i want to make a shadow on the lightest plane i'm gonna color pick the middle tone and when i paint here that is my shadow and if i want to make shadow on the darkest uh plane i'm just gonna color pick darker color than this one so First, I like to start uh, and like to actually make some shape and let's say direction, how I like my grooves to go and like be in general. So I'm gonna go with this middle tone and if I wanna make shadows, as I said, I'm gonna color pick this color and I'm just gonna like randomly make some strokes with my brush. Okay, let's say we're happy with that. And this is our second step, like blocking out and setting those basics. And now on a new layer, don't forget to clip it. Uh, we're gonna draw lightly those grooves. So again, color picking the darker color. I'm gonna size down my brush and press pen pressure, which is basically shape dynamics here in brush settings. And then I'm gonna follow the shape that I just made and make those grooves.
Uh, now that I'm done with grooves and dark values, I'm going to add some highlights to make the grooves pop. Have in mind that highlights are placed on the opposite edge of a groove. So here's a short explanation and I'm going to try to explain how it works. So if our light source is coming from the left corner and our groove is looking something like this, for example, the closer part of the groove is in shadow because light is actually hitting this edge. So this part of groove or the opposite edge is going to be highlighted. So having that in mind, we're going to add our highlights to our grooves and make them pop. This is also the part when I added some other cuts on the wood, went back to the mask layer and correct the shape a little bit and also play with the light and dark values to gain some more definition. I went back and forth before I was satisfied enough to move on and this is the part where you can stylize the wood, add swirls, cuts and with everything in mind on how lighting works, the cuts, the grooves, we only need to finish it up, make it more believable, correct some parts if needed and then we'll add some final touches. So that's what I'm gonna do real quick and I see you after the time lapse.
Okay, I made few changes to my complete look of the wood and at the end you saw me added two layers on the top of everything just to add a little bit more of a red tone to darker values and a little bit more yellow tone to the lightest. I set this layer on multiply for darker values and soft light for the highlighted areas. You can clearly see the difference between before and after. There you go. This was how to paint a wooden texture. Thank you all for joining me today and for coming this far in the video. If you find any kind of value in this video, make sure to like it. And if you don't want to miss any of the other videos in this series, please make sure to subscribe. It really supports me and my channel. If you want to check out the rest of the schedule for this material study series, everything will be linked down below. Stay awesome guys and keep creating. Bye.